welcome to Bulls and All. And uh, I got Wayne here with me. Hi, Wayne. How are you? I'm doing very well. Musa, how you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. But today we're here about some people who might not be doing, uh, well, they're doing pretty good. And, uh, of course, they need your help. So almost uh, all the show, or a good portion of the show anyway, is going to be dedicated to them. As, uh, of course, they need all the help and, uh, and Moose, assistance they can. Isn't the weather great for this? Fantastic day. The big fell up above has looked after him today because it was threatening all kinds of showers. It's going to be a beautiful, sunny, 21-degree day. The crowd's all rolling in behind us. But who's actually the real stars today that are behind us? Well, today, Moose, definitely the stars of the show are the Kids for Cancer. They've been here all day, and uh, we're going to show you them and uh, talk to them. And just we need your support with this uh, Kids for Cancer, very serious and crippling disease, and uh, we need all the help we can get. Princess Margaret Hospital are here, and we've got uh, some M car girls going around, and they're taking uh, collections. They have uh, all kinds of things happening today. It's happening today, to help baby. help out with the kids with cancer. So if you're one of the people that are here in the crowd, uh, obviously, big thank you for coming. But don't forget, it doesn't stop here. If you still would like to donate, we're going to tell you how you can do it because they need all the help they can get. And, of course, we're talking to uh, some of the survivors, of course. All, they're all survivors. They're all heroes and all legends. And uh, we're going to be getting in, uh, in with them. But before we uh, start having a chat with them, uh, yesterday, of course, this is uh, being shown a few weeks later than it the event that's sure happening, is because we pre-record of course oh uh, but yesterday we went down to the Galleria where a bunch of the uh, state emergency service the volunteer fire brigade the fire there's brigade, a lot of cone heads down there for some reason moose can you explain that well basically the deal is well we'll actually show you what the story's all about <laughs> they explain it and uh, and you can see what happens so let's go to uh, part of that story Hold on to your head. Hi, everybody. We're here at the Westfield Galleria, and behind us is a whole bunch of uh, policemen, fire brigade, SES people, uh, ambulance, all kinds of people from all these different uh, walks of life, and they've all raised around about a thousand bucks to get their head shaved. You can see it all happening on the stage behind us. I'm going to talk to Naomi here, who doesn't even know I'm walking up. Hi, Naomi. How are you? I'm very good. Yeah, good, good. Now, tell me, what's prompted the, uh, the head shave that's coming up? Uh, well, I work with Radio Lollipop, so I go down to the children's wards and uh, met the kids down there, and they're great, so I'll do anything for them. Fantastic. Now, everyone's had to get like $1,000 donated to get their head shaved. And of course, you're a girl, which is a uh, bigger, bigger uh, probably sacrifice. How do you feel about all that? Oh, that's all right. I need $100 more, and I got $3,000. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, congratulations. Thank you. And, uh, Anyway, summer will be here soon. It'll be all right. Uh, it's trendy. It's trendy. I got a few beanies and stuff, so. Yeah, yeah. Good on you, Naomi. All right, now over here we got a, a bunch of the guys from uh, Blue here. Hi, how are you going? Good, thanks. You going to get your head shaved as well? No. Why, why, why? Uh, I, can't. I look like I'm a professional. Okay, yeah, same as me. Congratulations. <laughs> These guys over here doing it, though, aren't they? Yes, they are. Okay, I don't know if you can still see us over there. We're going to try to wander in. Thanks a lot for that. Okay, now we're gonna we're gonna wander in here. Can you get me? He's he's trying to bring the uh, camera in. Okay, well here we are. Hi, how you going, Mike? How you going, buddy? Not too bad. Now you're gonna get your head shaved. Absolutely. It's for a great cause, though, isn't it? Definitely, mate. Yep, definitely. Now, did you guys all get together and uh, put something in action? Because yeah. We did, because um, we live around the corner for each other, and we're in the same organisation, so between the two of us, we got together and a couple of our ideas and raised a bit of money. Now we can see he's Mike Ward. Hi, Mike. How are you? Good, mate. Thanks. How do you feel about it? Uh, a little bit nervous at the moment. <laughs> what, what's more nervous, being on stage or just getting the hair shaved? No, getting the head shaved. <laughs> does uh, your wife or your girlfriend know about this? Oh, uh, She does. <laughs> and any, imp any opinions she's given yet? She said, uh, don't come home if it looks bad. <laughs> And your name, I didn't get your name. My name's Daniel, mate, Daniel yeah. Filer. Yeah. Now, you guys are with the uh, the South Coogee Bush Fire Brigade. You guys are lifesavers as it is. Absolutely. And, of course, you're donating as well, trying to help the kids out. So, uh, good, great effort. Cheers for that. Thanks a lot. Good effort. And of course, uh, unfortunately, you got the hot season coming up ahead as well. It's all worth it, though. It's, it's, uh, good luck to you guys. Cheers, Thanks a lot. Okay, well, you can see this is what it's all about, donating, raising money for the... Poor little kids with cancer and trying to help them out all the way through. 
and uh, you see there's people from all over the place here. So we'll watch a little bit more of the head shaving. We'll try to catch up with some more people in just a minute. Okay, now I've caught up with the organizer here, of course, from Princess Margaret Hospital. Yes. And I'm talking to Randy Hendry. Hi, Randy. How are you? Hi, Moose. I'm well, thanks. Now tell us, what is Bluey Day all about? started in Victoria in 1995. Young child lost her hair because she was having treatment for cancer. A police friend of hers said, look, don't feel so out of place. Why don't I whiz off and have my, my hair taken off? When he came back with a shaved head, his mates thought it was such a great idea. Why don't they all do it? And it perpetuated from there. And slowly they started raising funds uh, for the hospital in that particular state. Now that was Victoria. And then, of course, New South Wales joined and all the other states in Australia came on board. And now today, throughout Australia, there will be hundreds and hundreds of police and fireys having their heads shaved right now. Fantastic. Now, this all kind of really starts uh, getting in motion around about February. What happens then? Well, we have an event where we launch it. We basically uh, invite a lot of people along from FISA and from the police, uh, a lot of children from the hospital. It's sort of a, a bit of a party, and we all get together and um, uh, talk about Bluey Day, what we're going to do to raise funds, and basically uh, that's it. Off they go. They register. They pledge that they're going to raise $1,000 for us. We give them special kits and ideas on what to do. Uh, they go off and do it, and then come along today with their bank balance and lose their hair. Fantastic. Now, we see people from, uh, of course, police force, uh, fire brigade, volunteer fire brigade, state emergency service. Uh, who else is involved with all this? We also have uh, a number of students from certain schools. For whatever reason, they've decided they want to help the children with cancer uh, or the children who have been burnt. So we have quite a few schools who've come on board this year. Uh, some of the police cadets have joined in. And then there are the occasional adults out there who aren't policemen, they're not fireys, but they just want to lend a hand. And fantastic. And we see uh, also uh, some people, we spoke just a little while ago from, to uh, Naomi from Radio Lollipop, That's who, right. who yes. said uh, she's a hundred bucks short of a grand, uh, three grand, three grand. Dig in, Moose, dig in, see if you can do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd love see to. Help love Hello. To. How you going, mate? And you've got a couple of boys here with blue, blue hair for Bluey Day. You got, what's your name? I'm Jeremy. And your name? Hello. You want to say hi to everyone there? Say hi to everyone. Hi. Say hello. And every, thanks, boys. And you can see everyone gets into the spirit of it, of course. They do. And uh, you got all the people from all the different walks of life, and they're raising funds. And, and now someone says, well, it's a great idea. I don't want to get my hair shaved, but I still would like to donate. They can do that as well? Absolutely. We have quite a number of people out there who have said, look, I'm not interested in shaving my head, but I really want to contribute to Bluey Day. That's not a problem. We can give them special receipts and recognition. They just don't have to come along today and lose their hair. They just have to come along and uh, clap everybody else who is. That's fantastic. Mm. Now, you've got obviously some people here uh, helping out and some prizes and all that. Would you like to take the opportunity to say thanks to them? Oh, I certainly would. Just cuts of the ladies who are doing the official head hairdressing. So we blame them, do we? Oh, we do, yeah. But not much blood. It's been good, hasn't it? Good. I thought, you know, to make it more exciting, the shears like the old sheep shears, you know. Oh, but no, don't, don't. And this place, Westfield Galleria, are fantastic. They've set up the whole thing for us. Corporate Theatre, you may have heard of them. They do a lot of the major events in yeah. town. They did all the staging for us. And, of course, 92.9, and they're uh, our MCs for the day. Come down and help out, and... Uh, and the razor blades and all that kind of stuff, they're supplied by somebody. That's Remington, and Remington are our big national sponsors. They're the ones who put their hand in the pocket for most of the costs for Bluey Day. Fantastic. Well, congratulations to your whole organization. And don't forget, to you can keep donating. It doesn't have to be uh, get your hair shaved or whatever. You can always donate. It's a great cause. These kids, uh, you and I, when we get a headache, we can take uh, some disciplines or something. Right. Yes. But this is something that needs a lot more work and a lot more research. So how can they donate? How do people donate? They'd like to uh, do it. Well, once we start the event, they simply have to ring the hospital, Princess Margaret Hospital Foundation, and uh, we're able to organise um, some way of getting some funds to us. Um, ring up, bank card, visa, checks, money orders, whatever. And just ring PMH? Just ring PMH, yeah. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, Randy, for that. And, uh, 
and uh, good luck on today and, of course, uh, the ongoing efforts that you and your whole gang put together. Appreciate your help, Miss. Thank you. Hello. We're still live at the Ellenbrook Speedway, and I'm getting ready to talk to uh, Melissa and her son, Steve. How you doing, Melissa? I'm good. How are you? Real good. Now, we're getting ready to hang out with little Stevie. Steve, how you doing? Good. So if you could just say hello to everybody out there in TV land. <laughs> now, now, Steve, what are, you, what are you doing today? Just hanging out, having a bit of fun at the Speedway? Yes. Now, which type of cars do you like? Um, and how old are you now, Steve? Hi. How old are you, Steve? Eight. Eight. Now, Steve. Um, when is your birthday? The 8th of October. Oh, good on you. So are you having fun today? Yes. That's good. And I see you have a nice cool hat on with your brothers and sisters there? Yes. And uh, your name is? Samantha. Samantha. How you doing, Samantha? Good. And how old are you, Samantha? Nine. Nine. Ten. Now, do you have any friends you want to say hello to? So you're just hanging out with mom? Yeah. <laughs> and your name is? Kieran. And how old are you? Four, six. Good on you. You having fun today? Yes. Right. Now, mom. Yes. Now, I can see you got a busy household. You got, what, four children? Four children. I'm glad you guys finally got, you know, a couple of TV sets around the place. <laughs> Good on you. <laughs> <laughs> and so how's everybody been? Yeah, really good. Yeah, coping well. Mm. Yeah. And enjoying the day? We are. It's, it's a lot different to those four brick walls that we normally are in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Makes uh, a big difference. It's nice to just feel normal for a little while. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's better than, you know, you see them sick all the time. And this is like, oh, normal again. It's really nice. Yeah. And it's really nice for these guys to do it for us. Yeah. Great. Now, um, how long will they be out before they have to go back in for treatment? He goes back in on Tuesday. Wow, okay. So, so he only got out for the weekend. So we got to give him as much fun as we can today. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks a lot, everybody, and uh, I'm sure you guys are going to have a great day. Thank you. As usual with most men, when they're flanked by beautiful women, they forget names and all that and lose their minds. So I'm no different. Uh, Patricia and Ellie here. And uh, we've got two uh, older blokes on the other side, and I'm probably the oldest here. And we got Dave Galloway, and uh, we've got Lynn over here. So how you doing, guys? Good, mate. You? Yeah. I'm doing very good. And Dave? Yeah, thanks, Wayne. Excellent. Now, um, can you tell us a little bit about today's event? Yeah, we've just had the first heat of the Amcas, and it went really well. The kids for cancer are loving it up there. And it's a pity that people, more people haven't come along. Okay, then. Now, Dave, can you tell us a little bit about your involvement, other than the fact that I just got arrested? What would you get arrested for? Uh, it's nothing we could say on the show. Where did you get that? Okay, mate, no, everything's here for the AMCARS today and uh, the kids with cancer and uh, every, everyone here. You know, we want to put on a good show for all the crowd, especially for the kids, you know. Uh, they've got a disease that none of us want, and I really hope they can fight it and beat it. Uh, wow, well, I mean, I'll tell you what, um, just watching the kids here today, it, it makes you, um, you know, it gives you a lot of courage to see them go out there and battle the way they do. It makes a lot of some of the things that we have to deal with on a daily basis seem very minute, so uh, I definitely take my hat off to them. Now, um, today we have these two lovely young ladies, and they have their tins here. Can you tell us what they're for? Oh, it's just fundraising for the cancer kids. Just Okay, now everybody, did you hear that? It's fundraising for the kids with cancer, so make sure. Now, we want these tins to be full at the end of the day, uh, even right now. So if you're at home or whatever, come on down to the Speedway and have a ball and support kids with cancer. And before this, we're going to go to another break. But before we do that, we're going to go to another story that Moose did. And this was with uh, the policeman down at the uh, Galleria, people getting their head shaved for cancer. I'm way ahead of you.
Okay, here we are up on the stage. It's all happening. We got the uh, gang from 92.9 hanging around in the background. Hello, how are you? Hi, good thanks. What's your name? Tammy. Tammy, now you're from Just Cuts. Yes. And uh, how are they? Are they behaving all right or what? Yeah, yeah, they're really good. Yeah, now <laughs> it, a bit nervous. <laughs> a bit nervous. Now, uh, hi, what's your name? Shane. Now, Shane, how do you, uh, you put all this together? Um, I initially uh, started this because my uh, cousin's daughter's got leukemia, so I thought it would be a good way, you know, and it's, it goes to a good cause. So, yeah. How's she going? Oh, very good, yeah. She's in remission at the moment, so everything's working out well so far. So uh, you got some of your mates all together and uh, had a go at it? Well, no, I was the only one that participated in it this year from my station, but um, hopefully next year I can get a, a few more to, uh, to do it. Well, the pressure's on them now, isn't it? Well, exactly right, yeah, so hopefully we'll raise a bit more next and year. And what's her name anyway? What's her? What's, what's your niece's name? Uh, Chloe. Chloe, Chloe, get better soon, sweetheart. It's good everything's going for you. Good on you, Shane. Thanks a lot. Now, uh, we got uh, everyone here. We got people from Just Cuts giving their haircuts. And we got a guy here who's going to, I reckon, leave it like that. What do you think? Pardon? I reckon, leave it like that. What do you say? If you say so. All right, what's your name? Wade. Wayne? Uh, you don't want to leave it that way, do you? No, I'll get the other half done. Yeah. Now, Wayne, where are you uh, based at? Uh, Vic Park. Vic Park? And uh, you guys are also all got. <laughs> no, you don't want that, do you? <laughs> no, I better cut the other half off. <laughs> Uh, although you could get uh, some parts and some movies, you never know. Oh, I don't think so. Not you know, uh, Vic Park, the guys all got together and jumped in this? Uh, no, actually, I'm a member of the Freemasons. Yes. I've mentioned it to my lodge, and they got together and uh, raised the money for me. And some people got behind you as well, not just funds, as any uh, organisations get behind you as well? Yep, start with the rest of the lodge, um, Freemasons, and also uh, Welshville Car Sales and Primo Cafe. They all got behind me and donate some money. So good on them and good on you for having a go at it because don't forget these people uh, are seen out in the public all the time and they're getting their uh, their curls cut off, their head shaved. Hi, how are you? Uh, yes, how are you? What's your name? Steve. Steve, where are you from? I'm from the Water Police. Where from, sorry? Water Police. Okay, now. Yeah. Oh, the Water Police. you got a big thing happening uh, next month, I think. Yeah, we've got quite a few events happening in, yeah, for us. Yeah, there's a Mandra boat show and uh, quite a few different events coming up. Also, you're going to have an out at sea rescue uh, as if it happened. Yeah, we'll be yeah, there. Right. It's the um, large passenger vessel or ferry disaster plan, so we'll uh, have a go and see how it works. Fantastic. You'd see some uh, pretty unusual things out of the norm out there on the ocean with things happening? Yeah, we can do. I'm actually in part of the diving squad myself, so obviously we get to do uh, a variety of different jobs, you know, from... Uh, drug recovery or exhibits, murder weapons, that type of thing, so it's good. All the fun stuff that they make fun of on TV, but it's the real life, isn't it? Oh, for sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, anyone you want to say thanks to for helping you out? Yeah, well, a lot of the people that we associate have donated. Um, we've got uh, Pacific Commercial Diving that supplied a $100 donation, and um, uh, Australian Safety Engineers, uh, we've got a lot of people that we deal with, yeah, for sure, it's been very good. And you have a go at it again next year, grow a new crop? I don't know, I'll see how it looks when it comes out. Uh, it looks great, doesn't it, everybody? It looks great, yeah, yeah. Terrific, yeah. I, I don't know if it's actually a Tom Cruise or a, uh, a Brad Pitt look like, would you say? Uh, I was thinking Brad Pitt, yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I wish. All the best, all the best. And we got another fellow here getting his head shaved. Hello, how are you? How are you? And what's your name? Martin. Now, Martin, which area are you from? Oh, I'm in the water police as well. Water police as well, okay. So you, you get to throw the gun and he has to go and look for it. No, I'm a diver as well. That's right. Yeah. Well, this is cool with you guys. You get your mask and all that on quicker now, don't you? <laughs> yeah, that's for sure, yeah. Slide through the water. You can, Actually, you can take up with uh, the Thorpey and uh, Torpedo and all those guys. Yeah, yeah. wouldn't want to put them to shame, though. That's, yeah. uh, that's the thing. Now, some people you'd like to say thanks to have helped you out as well. Of course, Just Cuts here giving you a good haircut. Yeah, yeah. I'd uh, just like to thank... Uh, my family and that they helped me raise some of the money so uh, yeah just thank my family and everyone that donated fantastic congratulations and thanks a lot for helping out we're not going to leave you behind oh look he's got a bandage here it's happened already i think i'll blame them for it um, i'm from darlington volunteer bushfire brigade okay yeah bushfire boys of course you got the big hot season coming up yeah uh well we'll see how it pans out there's a bit of rain so uh, it's not too dry anymore but yeah now, do you think this is a look you're going to stay with or what? I don't think so. I'll see anyway. <laughs> now, uh, and, and your name? I didn't get your name. Uh, my name's Ben. 
Ben, and now you some people you'd like to say thanks to for helping out because obviously everyone's got to get behind it and help out. Yep, uh, certainly the main sponsors that I had were the Swan Districts Rotary Club, uh, the A Cinemas in Midland, Bunnings Warehouse in Midland, and uh, Midland Disposal Store. They all supported amazingly. So, because it makes a big deal, and and uh, do you get a grand or get do better or what? I I think I just got over a grand. Yeah, um, the brigade sponsored me as well, so feel, it was. I feel almost like Susie Wilkes asking you, were you under budget or not? <laughs> no, just Al not. although I do feel like Susie, Susie Wilkes quite often. Oh, you look like it too. Nah. Oh, well, all the best to you anyway. Congratulations, and uh, thanks to of course the uh, the girls all here behind from Just Cuts having a go. The gang over there from 92.9, uh, and of course they got the band over here hiding, and everybody else of course, so we'll uh, do a swipe around and have a look at everybody here. Okay, well you can see me still wandering around down the crowd down here. I'm going to have a chat with Tony Carter standing right here. Hi Tony, how are you? Hey, how are you? Now, Tony, tell us, I'm good, I'm good. Tell us a bit about who you are and what this is all about to you. Well, this is actually, uh, I'm actually the dealer principal of City Motors in Perth. Yeah. And, um, what up, Gather Holdings! <laughs> and the HSVs. Um, Mike Hill, one of our technicians, his daughter uh, is involved with the Bluey Day, and uh, she's the young lady with very... Name little... Naomi, yes. Yeah. About to get her head shaved. Yeah, and uh, she came along and said, uh, would you help me raise some money? And she had in mind that she'd maybe raise $1,000. I said, I think you're selling yourself well short for that much hair. <laughs> so we had a couple of functions at work, and uh, I think the, the crowd at work got about $1,100 up for her. So all in all, uh, it's been good fun. But... Uh, from our point of view, anything to help uh, a cause like this, I think it's more than justified. Fantastic. Good on you for doing Thank it. You. Good on you. I think she's about a hundred bucks short of three grand. She said, "That's well, fantastic." At the end of the day, she'll be there at three grand. I'll guarantee it. Well done. Well done. Thanks. Thanks for, that's putting you on the spot, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. Thanks. And uh, that's the kind of stuff that goes on around, uh, of course, with the uh, West Australians in general. Always behind every great cause, like you see Telethon, the Peelathon and all that, and of course the Bluey Day. So as we said earlier, if you get a chance, make sure you get behind the cause. You don't have to get your head shaved. You can help out, as we've just seen here, and of course go and buy your, your brand new Holden from over at Cities. Thanks very much. No Cities, Newcastle Street. <laughs> Newcastle Street. Remember Newcastle Street. We've seen the commercials. And uh, of course get behind them. If you want to donate and help out, of course, this Princess Margaret Hospital. Give them a call, and uh, they'll be happy to, to point you in the right direction. So good on uh, everybody here for getting behind it. Of course, uh, as you can see, we got the police, the fire brigade, uh, just everyone's here. So it's going to be a great, it's a great effort by everybody. Okay, now we're going to try and catch up with Naomi. Now, you've seen her before. Gorgeous blonde hair. Hello, Naomi. Hello. How does it feel? i cold. Cold. Very cold. Now, did you, did, I don't know, it, hi, hello. Hi. Love your show. Thank you. Hi, how are you? Say hi, What's the meaning of life? <laughs> now, you, you went in and had the big uh, chop. By the way, I got your extra hundred bucks off him, so you're up for I three. Did, yeah. Oh, thank you. Up for three. Cool. Now, tell us, uh, how does it feel? Uh, it's so weird. When they're hacking through it, it's really weird and now it's just really cold yeah oh yeah we've still got winter so it's a beanie time yeah i've got beanie in the car beanie well it's a great cause and you've done a great job too because we've seen a couple of women and still a few more uh, to come so it's uh, as i said a bit a little bit bigger sacrifice yeah I'm, I'm hoping i'm going out tonight might you know be a novelty the guys will talk to you more cool. yeah 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 well you never or you can dye it or anything because you know the hair is going to grow over yeah, as soon as it starts growing, I'm going to dye it purple, I think, just for fun. Good, and of course, uh, great effort by you, and of course, Radio Lollipop, and uh, people can also donate if they want to help Radio Lollipop as well, can't they? Yeah, they certainly can. They can ring up um, through PMH and go through the office there, and uh, they can donate as much money as they possibly can to Radio Lollipop. We need it all. And it all helps. Well, congratulations to you. Thank you. And, uh, and of course, to uh, City Motors for uh, getting behind you and helping you out. That's right. Thank you very much. All, right. all the best. See you later. Okay, well, it's been a great day here, and it's going to go on for many hours to come. As we said, uh, Remington are here, 92.9, Angel up there, and I'll tell you what, I can see why they call her that. Of course, you've got uh, all the, uh, the uh, SES, the police, uh, fire brigade. Uh, we got some rangers here from uh, one of the high schools, just the whole gang, and it's a great, great day, great effort by everybody. Well, like Big Kev's. Well, like Big Kev says, I'm excited. I'm here with some young superstars here. I'm also here with Ellie and Trish. And that's uh, 
Trish, and that's Ellie. Now, uh, we're going to move along and talk to some more young people. Your name is? Kelly. And you're here with? Jessica. Hello, Jessica. Say hello. No. Okay. And how old is Jessica? Uh, three. Three. Okay. And your name is? Travis. Travis. Now, Travis, how old are you? Six. Six. Now, is there anybody you want to say hello to? Mm. Anybody at all? I'm sure you'll come up with somebody. We'll be back to you. And your name is? Natasha. 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 Now, how old are you? Four. Four. Now, uh, are you having a fun day? Yes. That's very good. So you like the cars racing around, huh? Yes. That's good. And your name is? David. David. And David, how old are you, Dave? Five. Five. You're a big five-year-old, aren't you? Now, you having fun today? Yep. You like the cars going around and what have you? Yep. <laughs> now, is there anybody you want to say hello to? Yep. Who do you want to say hello to? I'm the 77. Car number 77. Car number 77. Well, that's good. And your name is? Allison. Allison. Now, are you mom? I'm mom, yep. Okay, then. So, you got the little fella out here hanging out? Yeah, he's having a great time. Excellent. And your name is? Lindsay. And how old are you? Nine. Nine. And so you having a fun day today? Yep. Good on you. Well, that's just some of the things that's going on out here at Ellenbrook Speedway. And also, you know, we've got Ellie and Trish here. Now, Ellie, now, um, where do you guys normally work? Um, I'm a hairdresser at Sylvan for Hair. And Trish is our beautiful beauty therapist over here. I see. Uh, and she's done well at that. Good profession. Now, um... And where do you both of you guys work in the same place? Yeah, we both work in the same salon. Oh, excellent. Now, I'm sure for a lot of people out here, especially you guys, um, what is the phone number if somebody wanted to get in touch or, you know, take their, uh, you know, girlfriend to your salon? 9271-1335. And uh, where are you guys located again? On the corner of Guilford Road and 8th Avenue in Maylands. Well, I think it's going to be a whole lot of people going down there. Now, uh, anyway, we just want to thank everybody for coming out, and uh, we're going to have some fun now and just go in the pits and uh, hang out with people. But before we do that, we're going to go to a break. Welcome back, and uh, I'm still in the pits, a uh, place where I normally am, but I'm talking to uh, Gordo here. Gordo, how are you? Very good, thank you. Very good. Uh, they've got you here, and they're calling you the Rockingham Rocket. Yeah, well, that's it. Uh, it's a name they've sort of they've got for me, and it's stuck, but um, yeah, it's a promotional tool, and it's good. It gives everyone a smile, so that's the main thing. Reason being, of course, he's from Rockingham over in Queensland, uh, the other sunny state, if you guys are a bit confused. Now, uh, you're the guy who gets behind all this over in Queensland, promotes it. How's it been going over there? Yeah, we're uh, basically early stage what day. We're, we're about 800 k's north of Brisbane. Brisbane are big. We're new. We've got about 10 cars. Things are starting to happen, and... Um, you know, we need these sort of events to get the, get the ball rolling and get the things happening quicker. Get the balls and all rolling. We didn't do that earlier, by the way. And um, uh, you've got about 10 cars there. And because uh, this really is a special special kind of sport, more than just the uh, the other cars. Would you mind telling us a little bit about the AM car? Yeah, the AM cars are a division that's uh, come from America. They're called M cars in America. They're basically designed on the same rules. There's governing rules to the engines, the tyres, the chassis, and all that sort of stuff. It's basically a cheap cheaper form of motorsport. But on the same token, you can spend as much money as you like, but you'll only be a competitive the next guy because of the restrictions. And it's a, it's a great concept. I've raced all different classes, and uh, the rules change from year to year. These classes are here to stay. They're going to come off in a big way. And there's a lot of uh, scrutineering with these to make sure that uh, one car uh, doesn't have something different to yours. Is that correct? Yeah, there's machine examiners that do it every week. You rock up, they check everything from the from the tyres right to your engines. They check your safety gear. They check everything. Your crew members have got to be in uniform and things like that. It's a professional outfit um, you know it's it's a cheapest form form of motorsport but it's a professional outfit and it, it'll be a great thing in the future so even the engines down to the engines have to be the same and I'm told that if you think someone else 
has a different engine to you, there's, uh, I don't know what, the, you can challenge them? What happens there? Yeah, there's a claim rule, but there's a lot of misdemeanor about it that people don't quite understand. It. The rule is that there's a, a, a $500 claim rule on the engines, but in order to claim the rule, you must have, first of all, done two race meetings at that track. You must have finished on the same, same lap as the car, your engine you are claiming. Okay, and um, before you even get the engine of the other guy, they inspect your engine first. If they find no faults with the engine, they can't fault the engine, then they'll hand the $500 to the receiving driver. You take his engine, he gets your $500 plus you get, and your engine. So it's just a way of deterring guys from wasting a lot of money in needless places. So it'd be an advantage of buying a really good engine for 500 bucks. What if their engine's better than yours or something? Yeah, that's right. Um, I, think, I don't think there's any claims yet, but uh, I think it's only a thing around the corner. I recently went to uh, Archibald for the Australian Tour, where 78 of them turned up. And, um, you know, it was some of the cars there are phenomenally quick. And uh, I think there's a few guys asking a few questions. So wait for it next year. I think you'll see some go. Yeah, could do. Now, you mentioned tyres. All the tyres have to be the same, as we can see here. Uh, uh, you're limited and also air pressures and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, they're, they're a, a, what they call an American racer. Um, they're an AMCA stamped tyre, so they're affiliated with this class. They've got the logo, the AMCA logo on them. They're the same compound, the same wool size, they're the same uh, everything. The tyre is just identical. The only thing you can change is uh, your rims have still got to be 8 inch steel rims, but you can change your offsets. But uh, that's a great thing because uh, while a lot of people are buying the tyres, the price will come down and that way it'll make it even cheaper again. So it's great. It's, it's all trying to set it on equal terms and making it as competitive as possible. It's competitive. People enjoy it. People come back. Bums on seats. Everyone makes a winning. And, it, and they're good too because you're in the, the top speeds. We're just going to wander around. We can see uh, Ben Ludlow there has got his car and, uh, of course, Palella and uh, Sonica. We've got a lot of different cars here. And uh, the, the number 77 here. All these different cars here. So obviously there, uh, as you say, there's something that's... Uh, it's a cheap race, but you're still looking, what, about 5 to 10 or something? Yeah, well, my car in Queensland only owes me about $6,000. I've heard of guys spending 12, 15 grand, but uh, again, those cars have come to Rockhampton and we've given them absolute caning on the same take and we've been down there. So the money's not the thing about the object. There's a lot of different style chassis. You've got Bastard chassis, Redline chassis. There's guys constructing chassis here. So long as they stay within the regulations, you can just build one at home, and that's the great thing about it. And there you go, of course. There you go. Any idea of. Uh, track uh, speed on the track? Uh... Well it depends, this track's fairly loose today, um, it's the biggest track I've raced on for quite a while and probably the loosest track so until the track comes in you're probably not too sure but I reckon they'll be pushing 120 clicks sometimes maybe between 100 and 120 sometimes down the state so that's, that's pretty quick for these things. We got young uh, Robbie Galloway just turned 16 out there racing with all the big boys, I mean it's just it's not limited to uh, age or gender or anything like that, everyone can get into it? That, that's, that's exactly right. You're on the ball there that because um, there's not enough young kids coming through. This class is a class that uh, that certain gentleman, the young fellow, he's only 16 years old. His dad's helped him out and he don't mind helping him out because it's not an expensive uh, motorsport. And if that's the case, young kids come through and we've got a great future if they come through. If they don't come through, when I'm uh, gone, there's no one else around. It's, uh, it's not looking real bright, is it? I'm sure the way uh, it's all set up, there's going to be plenty of people coming into it. So it's fantastic. Thanks for talking to us. No worries, I've had a great pleasure. Thanks to uh, all the public for having us over here. The Western Australia people have just made me feel at home. The drivers, everyone's done a great job. JCD Motorsport, the sponsors, the, uh, the Children's Hospital Foundation that, that it's all here for today. Yeah. I tell you what, last thing I'll say is that you know, we should be getting their signatures because they are great kids. I've got the admiration for them and they have an apple battle every day. Life's not so tough for us, is it? No, no, they're the legends really and uh, of course that's what this is all about. So. Uh, obviously uh, we're going to be taking this to a lot of other tracks as well and you never know, uh, maybe a couple of years time we might be doing it over in Queensland, you never know. Well the ball's an all program, I've heard a lot about it, it's a great thing and uh, mate, anytime you're in Queensland you're welcome to come up and see us and we'll do the best we can for you. Thanks mate, all the best to you, all the best and uh, we're going to be following a lot more of what's going on here so we'll just see what's happening now. Hey guess what guys, we're in the police lineup. I'm number 604-7. No, just kidding. We're here with uh, Paul Whittington and his uh, happening crew. How you doing, Paul? Oh, not too bad, Wayne. How are you? I'm doing very well. And your name is still? Peter. I knew it all the time. Now, Peter, now what do you do for the team? I make the car look shiny. Well, that's pretty good. You got your work cut out for you today, don't you? Yeah, yeah. We paint it, we clean it, we make it look good for our sponsors. Excellent. And your name is still? Rob. Now, what connection do you have with this young man? I'm his old man. <laughs> Oh, we got young man and old man. Now, how's that young man faring today? How you doing today, Paul? Oh, I'm quite well today. It's a bit, a bit warm, better now, than yesterday. Now, as far as your races go, you've gotten a first and a second, so the, oh, the guys are looking after you, aren't they? 
Oh, they sure are. Without these two guys here, it would be that difficult to get the car out here. It's just unbelievable how much work go actually goes into the cars that you can't see. It's, it, it does take a lot of time. Yeah, I mean, these cars are magical. I mean, you just whip your hand around, you never know, and then the next thing you know, you got a hat. So, I mean, all these things can happen. And you're probably wondering how I got that out of your car. That's a long story. Now, um, basically, guys, to uh, get a car like this ready, and uh, you guys have already pulled the first and the second, how many races do you have left today? We have two left. There's our third heat and then the feature race, which is starting position in the feature race. They take the points from your heats, and it's the highest point scorer starts off the rear. So it looks like at this stage we'll be starting up the back somewhere. It's just a matter of waiting for our third heat to see exactly where. Okay, now, now, Dad, now let, let's, let's talk now. We're going to talk in confidence now. Now, basically, now, I mean, you got him in a car early to kind of get rid of him. Isn't that the real case? How early was it when you got him into involved with cars? Uh, we actually got Paul involved when he was about 14. We had a, a super sedan and we got him in there up here for one season and he drove that. And then um, he had a rest for a couple of years and then we started on this. So, And he's been doing well on this one. So been at it for a few years now. Now, I know you want to say that, you know, natural talent probably came from Dad. Is that, is that what you want to say on camera? Um, no, we just help him with the training and we put a lot of effort into teaching him how to drive, what lines to take, uh, and just a bit of encouragement in that respect. Okay, then. Now, uh, Pete, I mean, you've got a big job every day when you do that. And, uh, by the way, if we can get a shot of these shoes, can we explain a little bit why we have shoes like this? I thought if you click the shoes like this three times, you go to uh, Kansas. But why do you have those shoes? Oh, to look good? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> these, are, these are fireproof boots so that if, if you do have a crash and the car catches fire, your feet don't get burnt. You have, I think it's about a minute and a half to get out of the car before they will actually burn or before you will get burnt. Okay, then. Well, it sounds like a few dates I've had where I've gotten burnt. But anyway, um, as we move along, um, Pete, now do you have a team of people that help you get this car ready, or you do it all on your own? What you see here is what you get with a bit of help from uh, a few other little other people uh, that are behind the scenes, but basically with the help of the family, uh, myself, this is how we make it look good all the time. And it pays off eventually because we won the best presented car last year, which is... Makes it uh, good for all of us. That's a huge effort. Now, now, is there any sponsors you guys want to thank before you go on again? Oh, that's sure. We've got AJ and Automotives on the side here. We've got Promo and Tubbyella. They help us out with products. Uh, Teng Tools have helped us out a fair bit as well. And Graham's Mechanical on the back have helped us out. Oh, we can't forget the balls and all sticker up the front there. Balls and all stick. Now, where'd that come from? Is that, is that Access 31? Do you know these guys? Yeah. We work with them. So we're just uh, hanging low and to the left on that one. So uh, now we're going to go back to uh, a little bit. We're going to catch up with Moose and find out what the heck he's doing. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. Thanks, Wayne. Uh, and now I'm talking to another Wayne right here. Hi, Wayne. How you going, Mike? Yep, how are you? Good, good. Wayne Chris And Wayne, uh, of course, uh, you got your, your big monster here. Tell us a bit about it. Well, it's a Murphy frame with a, a Ford engine in, which is unusual to see out here because it's dominated by Chevys but someone's got to hold the flag for the Fords. Oh, you're the so, Ford man. Yeah. And um, basically it's a pretty well budget car, this one. Everything that's in it is second hand except for the engine. Um, or whatever you could get over the fence before the dogs got at you. Well, that's another way, yeah. Um, the sponsors I've got, without them, like, I wouldn't be able to run the car. They're a very expensive thing to put together. Yeah. I think a car like this, as it sits here, you're looking at nearly 40 grand now. Gee, like when you see you've done all this and now you see the AM cars coming out, of course they don't have the kind of power and the speed, but how do you feel when they're like 5 to 7, maybe 10 grand? Well, I used to run sedans and um, the buzz wasn't there after a while, so we went into these. Faster, faster? Faster, faster, more power, yeah. But, um, no, but um, like you do need a lot of sponsors and a lot of money behind it to, to run the cars, yeah. No, you never had any kind of major uh, problems or accidents or anything? Um, the major things I've ever had were just mainly engines, but yeah. since I've got an engine builder, precision auto engineer, to, to build the engines for us, we've never had to, had to touch the engine. You know, it comes off the dyno and it's perfect. Okay, well, this one of your sponsors, they look after you? Yeah, he looks after holding and solely the engine. Um, pull your limestone, they basically help with the running of the car and, and pit green and uh, want to react with tyres and fuel. and getting the car there so but just to hop in one car in these cars and run it for the day you're looking at 100 litres of fuel you know 
tyres on the back if you put two new... Of course, you're not using just normal, like, uh, unleaded at uh, 80 cents or whatever a litre on special at the moment. Uh, it's not too bad. It's a dollar a litre. It's methanol. Um, the tyres, to put a new set of tyres on the back of the car, you're looking, you know, seven, seven fifty dollars dollars $750 to do that. So it's you need a lot of people and a lot of money to do it, especially when you're a little bloke like me that has just a trailer instead of a transporter and... Like basically, what I've got here today is my spares. So. Yeah. And anyone else's, as I say, you could get over the fence for the dog got to you. Reminds me of the old days with my older brother. But anyway, that's another story. Well, thanks a lot for that. No and it looks like you're doing well there anyway. You're into the, uh, as you say, precision auto engineering, all the people there helping him out. And uh, that's number 16. Now we're going to walk up here and have a chat. They call him the fat boy, but I can't call him that because he's a little boy compared to me. This is the little boy, I'll call him because. Uh, Tell you what, he's, not, he's, he's still a skinny little guy here. How you going? Yeah, hey, good, Moose. Yourself? Good, good. This is Daniel Hawkins. Now, you see us talk to Dad all the time, but uh, they're a couple of mad drivers, and he's driving the number 100. Tell us a bit about your car. It's a uh, J and J car. It's got a 307 Chevrolet in it with a 750 double pumper methanol carby on it. And, yeah, it's just, just a limited sprint car, yeah. We see you out there uh, basically uh, cleaning the track up almost all the time. What's, what's the trick? Uh, no trick, just plenty of laps, I suppose, you know, yeah. Because, you know, these things, do they have brakes or not? Yeah, they do have brakes, but I don't know how to use them. <laughs> say, uh, it must be one of those pedals down there somewhere. Yeah, yeah, it's the one on the left, but, yeah, it's normally the clutch one in the truck, so, yeah, not quite sure to use that neither. <laughs> now, we see, yeah, of course, you're with uh, Jenda Bup Hollage and, of course, Skip Away Benz. Who else helps you out here? Uh, special thanks to Pursuit Contracting, Jason Bolan. He does uh, Bobcat um, final trims, etc. Uh, cabin engineering, they do all the engineering on the car. Uh, Digney Race Engine, he builds the engines. And Panel Tech, they uh, painted the car for us and uh, designed, so and so it for us. It's much appreciated to all of the people that's helped us out. And we see, of course, the mob, Dog, Jay and Lynn. Yes, yes. Well, the old man doesn't do much, but yeah, anyway. I think, he's, I think his pocket helps, but... Yeah, yeah, the Jenna <laughs> Hollage and uh, Skip Away uh, Rubbish Bins, that helps about, out a bit. Now, tell us a bit about uh, when you're in these, uh, you know, and it's all going, because really there's no protection from the extra dirt that flies up and, of course, the heat of the engine. How do you guys cope out there? Um, normally, the speed we're going is quite cool. It's normally when we're going fairly slow and the car guts us up with fuel and you start getting methanol fumes up and you start getting a bit hot then, but yeah, the mud doesn't really worry you. It's just part of the job, mate, yeah. yeah yep. and, and not to mention, of course, today's a beautiful day, and... Uh, yeah, it's too good but, to be here. But, yeah, that's right. But you guys have all the gear on as well. Of course, you have to wear, and that's that's not uh, uh, cool anyway. No, nah, this is a three-piece suit. It's got three layers of suit, so I don't have to wear woolen underwear underneath, so it's a little bit cooler when the wind blows through it, so yeah, yeah just... But yeah, it's got safety comes first, mate, you know? Yeah, yeah, of yep. course. You want to make sure you get out there to do it again the next time. Yep, that's the one, yep. Okay, well, thanks a lot for having a chat with us and uh, get out there and do some more. Thanks, Mason. 100 all the way, mate. 100, 100 all the way. Okay, well, look, uh, that's some of the, uh, the the big boys with the big cars, as you've seen. We've uh, been from the go karts through. Uh, there's all kinds of things happening, but we're really here today because of the kids with cancer. And uh, we're going to be catching up with a little bit more of what happens there right after this break. Hi everybody, welcome back to Balls and All. I'm just in where we do uh, a lot of our editing from. And uh, the reason why I'm here is I want you to keep in mind, of course, about... Uh, uh, donating to the kids with cancer. It's a great cause and uh, some some uh, very sad things have happened in the break. I'll tell you a bit about that in a little while. But uh, first of all, of course, the ashes are over. We're really happy to be back. So uh, we know we've been a little bit uh, slack, if you like, coming out and doing all your sports and leisure stories. reason being is because uh, with the ashes on, we really had nowhere to put them for a while, so we're ready to go. Make sure you uh, email us. We've got a new show manager, too, Gary Pudney, who's going to be there to uh, tee up all your stories and everything. Don't forget, too, September 22nd, we've got our big birthday party. We want you to be invited. Be, come down be part of the, uh, the crowd. Uh, you're sure to have a good time. A lot of special guests coming in, and uh, that's on September 
September 22nd at Cyril Jackson Senior Campus. But to get there, you must email us or write us, and the details will be on the screen. And uh, be, come down and have a, have a bit of fun. Talking about fun, uh, next week's show we've got coming up where we went into a place called Games Den, which is all about... Um, uh, people getting together and playing computer games, a lot of fun. Uh, but the following week's show is all about uh, something that's going to be happening on September the 28th, the 29th and 30th, the long weekend, down at Boyette Brook called Harvey Dixon's Country Music Center. And uh, it's going to be all about country music. It's a fantastic thing. Make sure you watch in a couple weeks' time when we show you that show. But to give you a bit of a taste of country music, uh, a while back when we were at the video club, uh, you might have seen, uh, we, started, we, we chatted with a couple guys there who uh, did their own little music clip. And as soon as I seen I said, that's got to be on balls and all. Hope you enjoy it. Have a look at this, and then we'll be back at uh, Ellen Brook Speedway. with uh, Sue Mills, uh, son of Chris Mills. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very well. Now, um, I mean, on a great day like this, uh, Kids for Cancer, uh, how is Chris faring today? He's very tired, but he's enjoyed himself today, and yeah, it's been a brilliant day. Okay, then I think a lot of people would like to know, I mean, Chris is 12 years old, I think a lot of people would like to know um, treatment-wise, because for people that don't see what goes into this, uh, what has the treatment been like for you, and what impact does it have on the family? 
Um, the treatment's done, done very well for Christopher. He's not on any treatment at the moment. But, yeah, the impact on the family, it's a shock to the whole family. Um, considering we had, 12 months ago, we had a healthy boy and now we haven't, we've got one in a wheelchair. And, yeah, that's just been really rough on the family. All right. Now, um, if you could just tell us a little bit, Sue, about the uh, treatment for your child now. Yeah, well, he's not on a major treatment. Um, he's only on his decks and his morphine. And, um, yeah, he's just um, not going in hospital much. Um, so, yeah, he's just got a patch on his chest that gives him morphine to calm his pain down. That's about all the treatment he's on. Okay, then. And um, he was just diagnosed with this 12 months ago. And it, and it's been rapidly uh, causing a bit of strife at the moment. Well, considering 12 months ago I had a healthy boy running around playing baseball, t-ball, you name it, he was doing it. And now I've got a child that's paralysed the right side um, and he can't move. Yeah, it's rapidly going down really fast. Okay, and uh, what type of toll is this taking on the family? I understand that you have two other children and how have they coped? Well, my nine-year-old Lindsay, he doesn't quite understand what's going on because as nine-year-olds do, they don't really understand. Um, but my 17-year-old, he, he thinks he's he-man and he can handle anything. But, yeah, he's not coping that well. And my, my family's not coping that well either. I've got my mum here and I've got my sister over there and my brother. I can't... They're not coping that well. Um, yeah, so that's about the size of it. I don't think any family can cope with what we're going through. It's very hard to do that. Wow. I mean, like... I mean, I'm just amazed at the amount of courage um, from some of these children and their parents that have displayed um, themselves, not only today, but each and every day, just trying to get through this. We just want to thank you um, very much for your time, Sue, and obviously we hope the best for Chris. Yes, I'm very sad to tell you, too, that uh, since that interview, uh, young Chris has lost his life. I'm very sad to, to tell you that. and. Uh, from Bulls and all, and I'm sure from everybody at the Ellenbrook Speedway, and I'm sure from all of you, we'd like to send our condolences to the Mills family, to Sue and all uh, her 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 children and uh, her husband and family, and just very sad to see this happen. And uh, that's what we brought you this show to try to highlight a situation in our community that. Uh, in some ways you can help by just donations or whatever. Get behind the uh, Princess Margaret Hospital and uh, help them try to see if there's some way that uh, they can cure this terrible disease. Very sad to see. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed the show. Uh, there's a few notices. I don't, I don't mean to seem harsh, but I just want to let you know about a few notices. Uh, coming up, don't forget September 22nd, our birthday party, second birthday party, if you'd like to come along to that. And October 2nd, we're going to be showing you some details now about uh, a quiz night for Guitarstrophy. That's a musical group, all guitars. We'll tell you a bit more about that next week. And, of course, Harvey Dixon's Country Music Center. Also, too, some people have been saying, how do we get the shirts? Go to our webpage. We know it needs a bit of updating. We've been really busy, but we're going to update that. But go to our webpage, and it'll have details if you want to get a, uh, a Balls and All T-shirt, show you how to do it. Forget those Rove shirts, Rove Live shirts. Get the Balls and All West Australian stuff, although he's a West Australian, too. So um, <clears throat> hope you've enjoyed the show. Uh, I'll tell you a bit more about uh, how things, uh, the proceeds go and everything. But uh, once again, uh, our condolences to the Mills family. All right, we'll be back uh, next Monday night at 8.30. I'm pleased to say we'll repeat it Saturday at 4. And uh, we'll see you. Thank you for watching.